Hey Chiefs Kingdom, I have one question for everybody watching this video. Do you love your mom? I know I do, and if you do as well, we've got a Mother's Day special for just you guys when you go to this link, chatsports.com slash mom. All moms deserve to be spoiled on Mother's Day, especially during this time we're going through right now. You can get all kinds of different flower bouquets. You can get gifts. You can get chocolates. Our partners, Pro Flowers, want to help you out with 15% off when you go to chatsports.com slash mom. Spoil your mother this year on Mother's Day. If you've forgotten in the past, you can make up for it this year. That link will be in the comments and the description. Go ahead and get 15% off. All right, let's get into today's Chiefs report. Let's recap the offseason, at least up to this point. It's been uh, not super hectic for the Chiefs in comparison to some other teams, but they've certainly made a lot of moves. They tagged Chris Jones. They were able to keep Sammy Watkins on a restructuring. Kendall Fuller did walk. He headed to the Redskins, and then Bashad Breland came back. Uh, more on him coming up later on as well. Uh, obviously, the NFL draft has come and gone. Kansas City added six new players, and they have signed 18 undrafted free agent. So it's been a busy, busy off season for the Kansas City Chiefs. And we're going to recap it here on the Chiefs report starting right now. Want to ask this question first, though. Has Kansas City gotten better or worse this off season? Type B for better, type W for worse. It's hard to say that the Super Bowl champs could get better, right? Like that, the bar is set so high, um, but they've managed to keep pretty much everybody. And if players continue to improve, there's no reason why they can't be better. So type B for better or type W for worse. Let's start with free agency. Fairly quiet overall for Kansas City. Not a lot of cap space to work with. Not a ton of major needs. Obviously, the biggest loss was Kendall Fuller as he headed back to the Washington Redskins on a four-year, $40 million deal. Kansas City wanted to get a pony up that cash uh, for Kendall Fuller. Nice player, not worth $40 million. It's pretty simple as that. So, uh, obviously, he was familiar with the Redskins organization. Kudos to him for getting paid. Chiefs have uh, bigger fish to fry. They've got to uh, make a final decision on Chris Jones, who we'll get to in a little bit. And then obviously Patrick Mahomes is due for a major extension uh, any day now, uh, possibly next year, but he's going to get paid a lot of money. Instead, Kansas City brought back Bashad Breland on a one-year deal worth up to $4.5 million. This was necessary after losing Fuller. You probably weren't going to keep both, but bringing back one was uh, you know, a priority. The only problem is, is since then, Breland has been arrested on five uh, different charges, and he's expected to get suspended that suspension was uh, apparently already expected to come down before the arrest. Uh, they're expecting a four-game suspension. I worry that it could be more uh, since he uh, got arrested since that came down. So we'll see uh, what happens there with Bashad Breland. But Breland's back. Fuller is out. Uh, we will see what happens uh, with Breland moving forward. But hopefully he gets on the field very, very quickly. Should the Chiefs sign another cornerback considering Breland uh, was arrested and might miss some games? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I don't think there's any harm in bringing uh, somebody in there. A guy like Aqib Tlaib is still out there. Uh, to bring him in for some veteran depth. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know down in the comments section. Obviously, Kansas City also brought back Mike Pinnell on a one-year deal. Helped uh, sure up that run defense. I thought he was an impactful player in 2019. Demarcus Robinson returns. Also, the entire Chiefs receiver core is back for Patrick Mahomes, which is a very, very good thing. Had some big games last year, especially against the Raiders. He should be a solid rotation receiver again in 2020. Some other notable signings include bringing back Anthony Sherman. Uh, the Shermanator is back on a one-year deal. DeAndre Washington, uh, I like that pickup as a rotation running back. Ricky Seals-Jones should be a solid tight end. Mike Rimmers, Antonio Hamilton, some depth players. Rimmers could compete for starting a position at left guard. Other notable losses include Blake Bell. He's heading to Dallas. Uh, Steven Wisniewski is going to Pittsburgh. Reggie Ragland, uh, the linebacker, he's heading to Detroit. Emmanuel Ogba, decent loss there as well. He's going to Miami. And then Jordan Jordan Lucas, the special teamer slash backup safety, is signing or has signed with the Chicago Bears. So that's kind of the look at free agency. Before we move to other parts of the offseason, grade the Chiefs free agency period this year, A, B, C, D, or F. I think it's a solid B. Uh, brought back pretty much everybody and uh, didn't do anything special, but when you have limited cap space and you keep the core together, that's pretty good work. 
kind of a part of free agency, but a little bit different as well. They were able to keep both Sam, uh, Sammy Watkins and Chris Jones, which I did not think was very likely. I thought one of these guys was going to have to go. Obviously, uh, there's still a scenario where the Chiefs trade to Chris Jones, but he is back on the franchise tag as of now. Obviously, uh, both sides want a long-term deal, but the report coming down last week is that Kansas City was hoping he would sign a team-friendly deal for the NFL draft. Obviously, he has not made major money in the NFL yet, so he's not going to do that. We'll see if the two sides can come to a long-term agreement, but it appears he will be at least back for the 2020 NFL season, and that is a very good thing for the Kansas City Chiefs because he is one of the most disruptive defensive tackles in the NFL. Played on the outside in the 3-4 scheme, switched to a 4-3, no problem. Still was very productive in 2019 while dealing with multiple injuries, so he is a big-time player for this defense. Sammy Watkins, I thought for sure he would get cut or, uh, or a major restructuring, kind of a minor restructuring, saved about $5 million, did the Chiefs. But I think they made it clear with bringing him back and re-signing Demarcus Robinson, they wanted to bring this entire core back for Patrick Mahomes and try to go all in again to win a Super Bowl, which, hey, I'm not going to argue with. Is he overpaid? Absolutely. But, hey, he's only here for one more year, and we'll see what happens long term if he wants to come back on a cheaper contract. But uh, I think it's certainly a good thing to have the Chiefs' number two wide receiver return in 2020. Now, both these guys' futures are in doubt. It appears they're going to be here in 2020, but who do you think is more likely to return in 2021 and beyond? Type J for Chris Jones, type W for Sammy Watkins. I hope it's Chris Jones. I think he's more impactful and will be long term, but it wouldn't surprise me if Watkins on a cheaper deal is the more likely scenario. Wanted to remind you guys about our Mother's Day deal from Pro Flowers. 15% off flowers and gifts when you go to this link, chatsports.com slash mom. Spoil your mom uh, this Sunday. Uh, make her happy. They're going to take care of you. You just order this stuff. They ship it directly to whatever address you put in. You don't have to battle the crazies at the stores. Go to chatsports.com slash mom and get 15% off. The longer you wait, shipping prices could go up. So I suggest ordering them, honestly, as soon as you watch this video. All right, next up here, the NFL Draft. Kansas City added six new players in the 2020 uh, draft. Uh, I, I like a lot of what they did. Uh, well, a couple of bizarre picks as well, but uh, all in all, pretty good. Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Not the biggest need, but he's going to be a major weapon on this offense, not only in year one, but moving forward. I think he's a perfect player in this system. Andy Reid thinks he's Brian Westbrook with more upside. That gets me excited if you guys remember the McNabb-Westbrook days in Philadelphia. I think Mahomes and Edwards-Alaire are a little bit more talented than those guys were. Uh, I think it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, it w again, it wasn't the biggest need, but look at the production. He kind of reminds me of a Ray Rice type of back where he can run, he can catch, he can block, he can do a little bit of everything. A bit undersized, but he's kind of a bulldozer as well. I'm excited to see how the Chiefs use him. Willie Gay Jr., I've told you guys a couple of times, I think he can be the most talented linebacker on this defense if his head is screwed on straight. Had a couple of red flags coming out of Mississippi State, but certainly a worthwhile pick in the back end of the second round. And then Lucas Niang, one of my favorite picks for any team in the NFL draft, but especially for the Chiefs, great value. Uh, I thought he was a round two player, and he almost fell to round four, and the Chiefs got him late in the third round. Uh, we'll see what his role is in year one, but I think long term he's either a right or left tackle for many years to come. Which of these rookies will have the biggest impact in year one? Type one for Edwards Alaire, type two for Willie Gay Jr., type three for Niang. I think it's between one and two. Uh, it depends on uh, how quickly Willie Gay gets up to speed. He might end up being this team's best linebacker. That wouldn't shock me, uh, but one, two, or three, go ahead and cast your votes down below. These are the other draft picks for Kansas City on day three. Legereus Sneed, the corner out of Louisiana Tech, uh, obviously played some safety as well. I think the Chiefs view him more as a cornerback. Obviously, they have said as much. Michael Dana, the edge out of Michigan. Was surprised by this one. I thought he was a round seven or UDFA type of guy, uh, but they took him in round five. Then Takarius Keys, they traded back into the seventh round to get another corner out of Tulane. Uh, so added some depth pieces in that secondary and an edge rusher as well in Michael Dana. I like Sneed. He's versatile. He can play multiple spots. Uh, played some corner, played some safety. Uh, six picks the last couple of seasons. Good playmaker. Uh, I thought the Chiefs should and would have gone corner earlier, but Sneed's pretty good value in the fourth round, so I think you can't be too upset with that pick overall. 
Grade the Chiefs 2020 NFL Draft. I gave it a B on our draft grades video. I think it was a solid draft. Nothing out otherworldly, but I thought they added some players who will contribute immediately and down the road as well. So A, B, C, D, or F. Go ahead and grade the Chiefs NFL Draft. Also, while you're doing that, let's get to 4,000 subscribers. We're 84 away as I film this video. YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV. More subs equals more videos. It's pretty simple how this works. We're trying to do videos every single day, but we can't do that until we get more subscribers. So go ahead, hit that big red subscribe button, and go ahead and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Just to kind of recap uh, things, uh, free agency, Jones, Watkins, uh, draft picks, and now we got UDFA signings. Uh, you guys thought I was done. No, no, no. We don't leave out the UDFAs. Shea Patterson, obviously, is the name that people will recognize, the quarterback out of Michigan. There's talent there. He's mobile. He's got a good arm. Just never really saw him put it together at Michigan. I thought he regressed a little bit in 2019. Didn't get a ton of help at receiver uh, from Michigan receivers. Peoples-Jones didn't have a great year and a couple of those other guys at Michigan. But 56%, uh, 23 to 8 is a pretty good ratio there. But I just didn't see the growth from junior to se senior season that you like to see. He's going to compete, ironically, with Jordan Tiamu for third string quarterback uh, job, which I think they will carry three quarterbacks or at least put one on the practice squad and uh, for those of you who don't know Tiamu replaced Patterson at Ole Miss when he transferred to, to Michigan so uh, the circle is complete and uh, now they will get to duke it out yet again. Javaris Davis probably my favorite UDFA signing I thought he was worthy of a draft pick versatile player good playmaker eight picks in four seasons at Auburn I like that selection a lot I think he's got a chance to make the roster and then Daryl Williams one of the top offensive linemen that did not get drafted veteran player in the SEC 38 career starts I think he's got a real shot to stick in the NFL and hopefully uh, the Chiefs can find a roster spot for him what is your favorite UDFA signing is it Shea Patterson is it Javaris Davis? Is it someone I didn't mention? There were uh, some names a lot of you guys recognize. Uh, we'll recap those in a second, but go ahead and let me know who your favorite UDFA signing is. Yes, Sir Durant, Daryl Williams, a couple of offensive linemen as we uh, kind of go through the list here. Uh, jo Jovan Fair as well. Kalija Lipscomb, productive player out of Vanderbilt. Uh, I like him a lot. I don't know if he will make the Chiefs roster due to the wide receiver position, but he's an intriguing player. Leva Hifo, also Cody White. Uh, White, kind of a possession receiver, would give the Chiefs offense a different look. Maurice French, Justin Shelton Mosley, lots of receivers that the Chiefs uh, brought in as UDFAs. Lavert Hill, you guys might know that name uh, the corner out of Michigan Javaris Davis Rodney Clemens Akeem Bailey Jalen Julius lots of defensive backs which the Chiefs need some competition back there and then Brian Wright and Amari Cobb I'm intrigued by these two linebackers especially Cobb who's kind of a unique athlete a lot of production good athlete as well I encourage you guys to go look him up and then Ter Tershawn Wharton and Tommy Townsend keep an eye on Townsend with Dustin Colquitt getting released he could be the Chiefs punter moving forward Grade the Chiefs 2020 offseason as a whole. We've done it all. We've done UDFAs, draft picks, free agency. We dug deep into the Chris Jones and Sammy Watkins stuff. Grade it all together up to this point, A, B, C, D, or F. There's nothing the Chiefs did that I don't really like or that I don't that I dislike. I like mostly everything they did. Uh, obviously, it would have been nice to keep Kendall Fuller, but he costed too much. But free agency, they brought back the key players. They signed a couple of pieces as well. Jones and Watkins appear to be back for 2020. Thought they had a pretty good draft, and I'm intrigued by some UDFA players that Kansas City signed. I'm giving it a good grade. Go ahead and let me know what you guys think down below.